Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County, and this show is about Plymouth County real estate. This is my 103rd show here in Brockton Cable Access. A headline for the month was, Sales Continue to Lag, but Mortgage Activity Shows Promise. We're going to talk about the numbers in April of recordings throughout Plymouth County. I have a great guest in the second segment of the show, Cindy Pendergast of NeighborWorks, which now is NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. And we'll be highlighting some of Plymouth County's notable land records. But let's go to the numbers. And let's go right to sales of property for the month of April. So there are 688 deeds recorded in April, less than the 798 in March, Less than last year were there 733 deeds recorded in April, and we're down seven months for the first four months of the year. In terms of mortgages, there was a little bump up this month. Uh, the, we're gonna show first, before we get into mortgages, the listing of sales in Plymouth County from Abington to Whitman, the 27 communities, the highest number of sales we're in Plymouth, second highest, we're in Brockton. You can see the whole list. And then I'm gonna talk about, show you a bar graph of mortgages. There were 1,495 mortgages recorded in April, more than the 1,443 in March, up 3% compared to last April. And what we're seeing for the first time in a long time are that people are refinancing. When the rates were low for a period of time and took a little bump, a lot of people stopped uh, refinancing. Now that the rates have come down, there are still some people that are taking advantage of low interest rates. I advise you to take a look at it. Uh, speak to your local lender and see where you sit, because you may save yourself several hundred dollars a month by doing that. Uh, we've always talked about foreclosures. It was a difficulty. Um, during 2008, 2009, and forward. However, it's dropped off significantly. There are only 22 foreclosure deeds in April, more than the 21 in March, but 45% lower than last year, 45% lower over the course of the year. And again, over the years since the crisis, it's continued to drop off. We also have tracked foreclosure notices, which is the first document that's recorded at the registry when people are in trouble. There are 57 foreclosure notices recorded in April, up from the 38 in March, but 41% lower than last year for the first four months of the year. You're also gonna see a listing of foreclosures in orders of notice by the 27 communities in Plymouth County. Uh, typically, Brockton and Plymouth have the highest number of foreclosure deeds in foreclosure notices. Um, just wanna let you know that we have a training session the first uh, Thursday of every month that I advise you to take a look at. Uh, clearly, it's a great way to navigate um, the website. We have a lot more things available online than we used to. We actually, actually go back all the way to the beginning of Plymouth County, which is 1686. So um, if you also go online, we have a fraud um, protection a link that you can sign up your email. And anything that gets recorded against your name would be notified by email, something I also advise you to take a look at. Um, but I, I have a great guest coming up in the next segment, Cindy Pendergast who will be talking about the convergence of two great nonprofit organizations, NeighborWorks and Housing Solutions. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County, and I have a great guest on my show. 
I have Cindy Pendergast, who is the regional director of Brock, Brockton. Brockton program director Brockton program of NeighborWorks. Director of what was NeighborWorks, which is soon going to be a new name. That's right. NeighborWorks. Welcome, Welcome to the show. Yep. Thank you, you John. want to explain the transition? Sure. So we've been known as NeighborWorks Southern Mass for quite a while now, and we're going to be called NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. So NeighborWorks Southern Mass is merging with Housing Solutions, which is an agency in Kingston. So, so. how did you get into this uh, business? Sure. So I um, was called about eight years ago by my friend Brian Moriarty, and he was working hard preventing foreclosures, and um, the agency had gotten some emergency home loan program, and he needed some extra hands on deck to process all the clients that were coming through. So he called me up and asked if I would um, come in and work just, just temporary. That's what he kept saying. <laughs> and so, so I started um, as a 1099 employee working with just that program and ended up loving it. I've been a Brockton resident for over 30 years, and working in my city in such an important you know um, role of helping helping the uh, the, the uh, residents it was just a wonderful thing so a year later they hired me full-time and I've been loving it great so let's talk a little bit about um, the transition sure because I was at an event t today and you have one of these too that yep gave out this beautiful brochure and basically it was announcement at the Shields building at Stonehill College of a consolidation of two very strong organizations. You sure. Want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So there's a little timeline in this flyer that John just yeah. mentioned. So um, Housing Solutions down in Kingston, they've been around for almost as long as we have for 30, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so 30, 30 um, some odd years. So Housing Solutions in Kingston has been working hard with um, working with rental clients, Section 8 vouchers and, and those kind of things. They do home ownership counseling and also um, some foreclosure prevention. So similar organization to ours, but their reach is a little, a little different direction. And then um, they, you know, here we are up here doing uh, same kind of things. Where the two agencies cross over is we do some property development programs together. So we've, um, we're developing senior housing here in Brockton. Um, we've done other projects together developing housing. And so um, it was announced today that our two agencies, NeighborWorks and Housing Solutions, are merging to be called NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. And yeah, that's so, pretty significant yeah. because NeighborWorks originally, many years ago, how many years ago did it start? Uh, 35 years 35 ago. 35 years ago, yeah. started based in Quincy. That's right. Uh, came down uh, and, and got involved in the foreclosure prevention primarily when Brockton was the hottest hit right. by foreclosures. Uh, again, from the housing crisis of 2007, 2008 forward. Uh, and then you brought in New Bedford into neighbors work. Right. So Brockton office opened 10 years ago. Yeah. And um, New Bedford opened um, probably about four years ago okay. now. And we actually, the New Bedford office is in um, commun uh, partnership with Housing Solutions. Okay. So, we, so we each shared that office in New Bedford. So, so your geographic area went from Quincy to Brockton to, to New Bedford and then pretty much over to the coast. Though I know uh, in our partnership on foreclosure relief, you've been sending foreclosure notices to all those towns. Right, right, Still, that's right, yeah. yes, yep. Well, that'll be a great thing. And so now um, Housing Solutions in, is in Kingston, and right. so now NeighborWorks Housing Solutions encompasses that whole southeastern mass. Right. And I noticed on the back of the flyer today there'll be four offices, uh, one in Quincy on Washington Street. You'll remain at 68 Legion Parkway in Brockton. In New Bedford, it's 80 Rivet Street mm -hmm. in Kingston is over on Summer Street mm -hmm. in Kingston. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's it covers right. the four corners. That's right. And so it'll be business as usual for the two organizations. Nobody's switching places and, you know, nobody's losing jobs or anything right. like that. It's two 
great agencies um, merging together and to become stronger. So a, a stronger reach in the community because together we'll strengthen each other with efficiencies and, and you know, uh, admin help and things like that, but also um, sustainability, you know, being a combined organization. So NeighborWorks is going from 20 people to 70. Wow. Because Housing Solutions has 50 employees. Right. So together, um, just our reach in the community, but also the funding that we can pull down because we're a nonprofit agency, right. and so it'll make us more sustainable. So we're excited about that. So um, you're involved in a lot of different things. You help people with tax returns this year. You're, you do uh, build and own housing yes, units. Yes, that's right. Quincy, Weymouth, Marshfield soon to mm -hmm. be, and Brockton soon to be. That's correct. And um, yep. let's talk a little bit about um, your home buyer training classes because I'm a strong promoter and kind of disappointed in our, our ability to bring new homeowners online, mm. particularly first time home buyers. I know there are some great programs for them, but I, I still see it below the pace that. Uh, people used to transition to, mm -hmm. and well, how do you help people in that regard? Sure, so um, studies have shown that an educated home buyer is a lot less likely to default on their mortgage, and so we, we are very passionate about bringing home buyer education, and um, in just my time at NeighborWorks, eight years, um, when I first started doing classes, a lot of the people in the class were there because their lenders was just ticking off the box. You've got to go get this class so you can get your certificate. So they were there just to do their time, you know, and, and get the class done. Now, fast forward, we'll have a class of 40 people, and there might only be one person in the class that has a house under agreement. People are realizing that this is the most important investment of your life, and so they're going and finding the education. And so last year we educated 1,100, you know, 1,400 people. And, um, and that's a, it's a great, a great showing that people um, do value that education. So how do people find out about these events? Google. Okay. So on, on a lot of website? times, yeah, they, they go on Google, they find us. Um, but yes, um, they can go to our website, sign up and pay for their class. And our classes, um, we do an interesting thing where we do a hybrid model. So when they sign up and pay, they get a link to do part of the class online, and then they only have to come out to one in-person session. And so when they come in person, they get to um, not only ask questions of a lender, realtor, um, we do an affordability analysis with them, and we'll also um, give them some next steps. So by the time they leave, they know their options, they have an idea of how much they might be able to borrow, and they have some next steps. And everybody that takes our class is automatically um, linked with us for free financial coaching. They get a free credit report. And so if we see that there's any obstacles that they need to overcome to be able to get to their goal of home ownership, they are able to access um, one of our counselors to work, to work with them to overcome. And I know that obstacle. sometimes when funds are available, your organization is used to help um, distribute down payment down assistance. Payment assistance. That's you want right. to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So the Brockton um, office, we administer the city of Brockton's down payment assistance program. Um, Elvira at our Quincy office administers the South Shore Consortiums program, which is Quincy, Weymouth, Holbrook, and Braintree. They have a down payment assistance. And so we help administer those programs, but also we also can get people information about where there might be other programs. Down payment assistance, it's, it's one of those kind of things where a city would have to pull down the funds and then use, you know, um, get it out to the public. So not every city has it. So we tell people about location-based down payment assistance programs, but also we educate them about lender-based mm -hmm. down payment assistance. Okay. And so many, many people don't realize that lenders have pro um, programs that can offer down payment assistance. So we help them with that as well. No, that's great. I think yeah. that, that certainly is a barrier. Uh, right. At least people think it's a barrier. That's right. Because I know Mass Housing has some mm -hmm. great programs that you don't have to get to your 20%. That's right. Federal Home Loan Bank offers them. So these would be programs that a lender would offer. 
So you could go to masshousing.com, for example, and see the list of lender partners and then go visit one of those banks. Mass Housing Partnership is the other Massachusetts um, loan program that helps with first time home buyers. So you uh, have so many hats that you wear over down the street on Leisure Park. That's Park, right. right <laughs> from here. But I, I always like to make sure that we talk a little bit about foreclosure right. counseling because although the numbers have really diminished, and we talked about that earlier, and I talked about that earlier in the show, how the numbers have been dropping, there still could be some people out there watching this show who have had some financial difficulties, medical issues, job loss, and they may be facing um, the possibility of foreclosure. Right. What should they do? So the first thing we, sell, we tell people if they're struggling to make their payments or they've gotten behind is first of all, call your lender and just communicate with them and let them know that you know, you've gotten behind and, and see w what they would be able to do with you, you know, if they would be able to work with you for a modification or something like that. But staying connected with the lender is the first most important thing. And then call us. We have free foreclosure counseling available. So we would work, we come alongside the homeowner and work with them and their lender to try to avoid foreclosure. So whether it's, um, you know, a modification or some other solution. And so. So this show, while well, it's taped in Brockton, gets distributed across Plymouth County. If someone is from a town closer to Kingston, would they offer some of the same services now that you're consolidated? So um, what I would say is still reach out to us and we would definitely connect you with, okay. you know, so, you know, if there's... Do you want to share with sure. our viewers your contact information? Sure. So you could go right to our website, which is nwsoma.org. And if you clicked on the um, counseling tab, that'll bring you right to our foreclosure prevention page with the, there's an intake packet. So we would need, you know, information from you to kind of come on board with, um, you know, what your situation is. Or you could call us at 617-770-2227, and my extension is 46. And is there, is there other programs we haven't talked about? So one of the other programs besides um, home buyer education, foreclosure prevention, we offer lead paint removal. Somebody has a home that has lead paint, so we offer lead, lead paint removal loans. Um, we also do landlord training. If someone's buying a multifamily, it's really important that you understand how to um, run your business. And so we do that training one-on-one, -on -one, um, either in person or we do it virtually through a Zoom meeting. And so we can do that training wherever you live. You know, you can do it right from your home. I know so. when I practice law, there are landlords that were unfamiliar with the intricacies of being a, right. a landlord and the you know, money in escrow and all those kinds oh, of things. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's, it's really important, like you said, um, how you handle the security deposit, right. but also s the proper screening so you're not violating the fair housing laws. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's a really, really important thing. Now, know. how often do you run those programs? So we, we do it by appointment. Okay. So someone can go to our website and um, sign up and, and pay. And then myself and um, Joe, Joe Medallo, we, um, we work together. And you know, I had a person call up yesterday. They had signed up and they had a closing date coming up because it was something that they needed. A lot of times when you're buying a multifamily home, the lender is requiring home, uh, landlord training. And so because I offer it with a Zoom meeting, we were able to do it the same day. Wow. So we try to work with the client's schedule. And um, it usually takes about an hour, an hour and a half. So it's, it's really good. And uh, you also do tax preparation? Right, free That's tax preparation. End, it, so it's already ended. So yeah. it's just during the tax season. Okay. So we had um, three locations last year, two locations in Brockton and one in Randolph, okay. where yeah, we, it was first come, first serve. Do you remember so. how many you did last year? So it's right here, oh, yeah, 745 okay. wow. returns. So it's free, and so we saved, we saved people a lot of money. So people should yeah. keep that in mind for yep. next year. Yep. The other important thing to mention is um, we have financial coaching available. So anybody that is connected with us, whether it's foreclosure prevention, home buyer education, anything like that, even, even a, a tax, someone that gets their taxes done with us, if they need some financial coaching to get, get through you know, to their goal, that we have all our counselors are trained in financial coaching. So is there anything that 
housing solutions in Kingston does differently than you do? Yes, they do. So they, um, they have a program where they, they um, administer the Section 8. So they, they um, have helped people with Section 8 vouchers. And I can't speak too much to it because that's not my area of expertise. But, but they have this program. I'm going to say it's family self-sufficiency. So they assist Section 8 voucher holders with increasing their income, moving toward economic independence, including earning their way off of Section 8. So even though they manage and maintain you know, um, apartments that are Section 8 um, and they help people with their vouchers, but they also have a program to help them move forward from Section 8. And so those are some of the areas that we can maybe overlap. And so it's... The consolidation of these two agencies not only expanded the area, but it brought some assets, I guess, that you provide to people Absolutely. that weren't there available earlier. Absolutely. So, right. and really it will become a one-stop shop, you know, for right. people that are renters, preventing homelessness, helping with um, people, home buyers, and, and retaining their homes, and property development. Yeah. Right, so, and that yeah. is coming up soon in Marshfield, in Brockton, right. in Plymouth County. That's right. Want to so, talk a little bit about the Brockton one? Sure. So um, we're developing um, 48 units of housing right on Main Street, 121 Main Street. So it's the old Kresge Department building. Mm -hmm. And um, so the bottom level is going to be retail. There's going to be parking underground. So that's a big win. Mm -hmm. And sure. um, and 48 units of um, mark. There's going to be um, some market rate and some affordable units. Okay. So. And anything else in Brockton going on? Yep. We're developing um, senior housing over on um, the Lincoln School, the old Lincoln School. So it's going to be 28 units of affordable senior housing. And, and in Marshfield, veteran housing. So veteran coming. housing. Yeah. Yep. So I, I don't know the details sure. about that program, but. Well, can you share yeah. your contact information one more time to our viewers? Sure. So you could email me at c.pendergast at nwsoma.org, or you can email us at nwsoma.org, or call 617-770-2227, extension 46 is Great. my extension. Thank you. As expected, Thanks, Rachel. John. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Registrar of Deeds of Plymouth County. I want to thank Cindy Pendergast, the Brockton Director of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. And she did a great job talking about the merger of those two organizations and a little bit about what uh, NeighborWorks does uh, as, as well as the combined organization will do. Uh, clearly, they've been a leader in the housing foreclosure prevention. Uh, they do the lending that we talked about for um, lead paint intervention, they do homeowner training, and they do landlord training. Just a great organization. So if you're looking for help in any of those areas, give her a call. This segment of the show, we always talk about something lighter in nature, some of our great history, the holidays for the month of May, May Day on the 1st, Cinco de Mayo, the 5th, Mother's Day was the 12th, um, Forces Day, the 18th, and Memorial Day on the 27th. So I highlighted uh, events here in our notable records will be related to Memorial Day. Uh, first, you're going to see an image uh, from where our notable land record collection of Island Grove Park in Abington. It was a site of abolitionist meetings pre-Civil War, but it's also a great park to walk around. There's a soldiers and sailors a monument as you walk across the beautiful memorial bridge that takes you across Island Grove into the park. Um, in 1882, land was granted for the park. It's the crown jewel of Abington. And um, as part of the bicentennial celebration, the Abington Sons of Human Union veterans built that majestic Memorial Arch and Bridge that I talked about. Um, since the days when it was donated by Ezekiel Reed, it's been used by so many people for boating, fishing, ice skating, concerts, or just a great place to walk. 
Next, you're going to see an image of Oliver Wendell Holmes. Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, had a summer home in Mattapoisett. He fought in the Civil War, wounded three times. He was born in Boston, and he was the prominent son of a writer and an abolitionist. When he was a senior at Harvard, he entered, enlisted in the Civil War, and again, he fought with the Massachusetts militia, and he was wounded three times. Uh, in 1902, he was named to the United States Supreme Court by President Teddy Roosevelt and was unanimously confirmed. Not something you see today. He became known as the great dissenter, meaning that he not always was in agreement with the um, decisions of the court. When he retired um, from the bench in 1932, he uh, moved down particularly to his summer home. He died in 1935 and is buried with his wife in Arlington National Cemetery. Last but not least, Brockton City Hall. When Brockton City Hall was built, it was built as a city hall, but also as a memorial to the Grand Army of the Republic and Civil War veterans. Um, it was the site of a school, and um, it um, is historic in a lot of different ways. It's a nationally recognized architectural gem. It'll celebrate its 125th um, anniversary of its opening this year in 2019. The architect was Wesley Ling Minor, and um, a great place to go in and walk around for Civil War enthusiasts. There's some wonderful Civil War paintings in there, a painting of the Merrimack and the Monitor submarines battling and other uh, great paintings you can see as you walk around that building. It's surrounded by Brockton City Hall Plaza, which includes a memorial statue to fallen fighter fighters and has been the site of a lot of Brockton historical and civic events. I want to thank Phil Philippides for helping put me put this show together today at Brockton Cable Access Television. Again, this is my 103rd show. Uh, before we leave, I'm going to show a quick image of one of our colony records. And the colony record that we have here today, uh, which we do one of every month leading up to the 400th anniversary of the Plymouth Colony, relates to a decision by the colonial governors back in 1636 to honor veterans. Anyone maimed in battle would be protected and cared for by the community. So that, which we do today through the Veterans Administration, was it started in Plymouth Colony in 1636. Then anyone shall, who be maimed in war shall be maintained competently by the colony. So thank you for watching the show, and I'll see you next month.